you guys ought to be really warmed up by now. You did sound check with us. You did rehearsal with us. My God, you know all the parts. You ought to get up on your feet right now. Aren't you glad to be here tonight? Aren't you so thankful for Dr. Bill Winston? Aren't you so thankful, so, so, so thankful for the words you're going to hear tonight? That's why I like this first song. It just simply says, oh, give thanks. But how many realize you need to give thanks even before you see a manifestation? You do what you want to do, but I'm going to give thanks for the word that I'm going to hear tonight. I'm not sure you heard me. I think I want to give thanks for the word I'm going to hear tonight. What about you? Hey, can I get a little more help down front here? Are there any brave souls that could come down and sing in the front? I knew you would. Is there yet another? Yes, I see that hand. Is there another? We need a few more singers down front. Yeah, when Pastor Stan is willing to come sing. My God, everybody ought to get down here. Yeah. Here we go. Come on, guys. Everybody say, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, let's yes, do that again. He is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good. I need more bass. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Yes, he is good.
up to heaven right now. Lord, we love you tonight. Jesus, we give you all the praise and all the glory. We came hungry to hear your word tonight. We made a choice to hear from heaven tonight. We thank you for Dr. Bill Winston. We thank you for words that come from heaven and move heaven into our heart. Thank you. It's a new year and it's a brand new start. And we give you all the praise and all the glory we honor you with our voice, with our lips, with our faith, with our song. Jesus, be magnified. Bring my Everybody, you deserve. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. 
as we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands. Let's do that verse again. As we lift Tell your holy him. name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift your Take holy course. name, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. Just sing in the Holy Ghost. Oh, we lift up. 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 singing the Holy Ghost for 60 seconds here as Pastor Jerry comes. Come on, tune up your spirit right now. Just you lift up your voice.
bless the Lord, oh my soul. Woo. Oh, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. Glory be to God. If you can, you may be seated. And then, before I do anything else, before I even say hello and welcome and all that sort of thing, just let me tell you. I told him this morning, I couldn't sleep last night. I'm probably going to say this every service, so you may as well get used to it. Hallelujah. Because God told me, he said, tell them if they will come in with a heart that's ready and wants something from me, ready to receive. If they will come this week with ears to hear, I'm going to do things that they have never dreamed I would do. He said, literally, where you're sitting, you will be healed. Literally, those of you that have a hard time for the last couple of years and your attitude has gone down, it's going to change. It's going to change. You will go out of here with the sweetest attitude by the end of this week that your family won't even know you and that attitude is going to break every ounce of bondage that's been trying to get to you and get to this place and it's not going to happen did you hear me it's not going to happen and that's the way we want it in Jesus name amen Amen. So it's going to be, it's going to be a great, hi guys. I love those guys up there. Glory, 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 glory. All right. Well, I was supposed to say good evening and hello and all that sort of thing. And I didn't, but I am now. So uh, we welcome you to the 20, can you believe 2022 word of his power. And I remember when my husband came out and told me he was going to have this happen and this was going to be. And then he told me who was coming. People like Jesse Duplantis. People like, like oh, Copeland. People like Dr. Bill Winston. And I told him, I said, you were dreaming. You didn't have a... <laughs> Well, he wasn't dreaming, was he? Because it's happened every year since. And I am so grateful. So very grateful. So I just want to be sure that I welcome you to the 2022 Word of His Power conference. And uh, uh, they have here on my paper, you're in the right place at the right time. And I believe that, don't you? And so without a doubt, we believe before you leave this place, you're going to be transformed and different and your needs met because that's what we believe around here and your mind will be at peace that's so important right now with everything that's going on that your mind be at peace so uh we're thankful you are here and I I know we've got some pastors we've got people from the ministry and I just want to say if you're here tonight you just want to stand I know they're coming in so anybody that's full-time ministry that there you go hallelujah hallelujah thank you God bless you good to have you guys thank you so uh with that said then uh, we do, of course, count it an, hour, an honor when ministries, ministers come and join us for these things. So in order to keep everything running smoothly, please take a moment, everyone, and uh, silence your cell phones. Yes. And uh, we ask you, please, no flash photography and recording during, the, during these services. Uh, listen. This word we're going to get this week, let, let me tell you something else. He, he told me, this is, no, this is no ordinary conference you're attending. You're, you're not here just because you, you, know, you, 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 had, you didn't have anything else to do. Do you understand that? You're here because God unctioned you to be here. And so don't take that lightly. And 
remember these men that are coming to us. They are gifts, gifts of God to us to fill us and replenish us and restore us and take us into the kingdom principles that we can reign in life. And that's what we're doing here. And that's why we have this, these men of God to come in and just, oh, I don't know, sort of give you a shot in the arm <laughs> and tell you, get going, get going, right? Get going for Jesus, and that's what we're saying here. So, um, and then, of course, we have conference CDs and DVDs in there for sale out there. Now, I, this is something I really have never done, but I'm going to do this because, and then Pastor Bill Winston is coming up, because I had them just, you know, write some things up for me, and uh, usually I just tell them how much I love them, which I do, and bring them up. But when I read this, I said, I want to read this. Now, everybody listen. Listen what you have in this pulpit this evening. Pastor Bill Winston is the founder and senior pastor of Living Word Christian Center, a church with over 20,000 members in Forest Park, Illinois. All right, all right, yes. And Living Word Christian Center, born and raised, and I love this word because I just get such a charge when he says it, born and raised in Tuskegee, Tuskegee, he goes, <laughs> Alabama. He was inspired by the numerous educators, scientists, and physicians who surrounded him as a youth as well as by Tuskegee Airmen and the legacies of leadership from two other T Tuskegee giants, Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver. And we've heard so many wonderful stories when he tells us. After graduating from Tuskegee Institute, he enlisted in the Air Force and served for six years as a fighter pilot during the Vietnam War, where his extraordinary achievements in aerial flight earned him the Distinguished Flying Cross. The Air Medal for Performance in Combat and the Squadron Top Gun Award. After the war, he joined IBM, where he met his wife, Veronica, and after being born again, Dr. Winston was called into the ministry, and aren't we glad? <laughs> he is the author of over 15 books and hosts the television program, Believer's Walk of Faith, and I know you know all this, but I love reading this. He also founded the Joseph Business School, which teaches practical and biblical principles to empower others to become entrepreneurs and business leaders. Dr. Winston also has 882 national, international churches and ministries under his spiritual covering through Faith Ministry Alliance. And we have this man of God coming to our pulpit now. Stand up on your feet and welcome Dr. Bill Winston to this pulpit. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Take your liberty, Pastor. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Give him the hand. I want you to give that praise and worship a hand clap, please. I want you to thank them. Because I mean, that, that was powerful here this morning. We do miracles. So great. I, I just, I just, I just, can I get a little bit more of that, that little flavor right if, there? Are you going to clap? You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. One more time. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else. Oh 
come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this great church. Thank you for the anointed leadership that's here. Thank you for this meeting and thank you for the anointing that's upon me and these lips of clay. But I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking you to think to my mind, speak to my lips, and that the word will go forth unchecked by any outside force. Now we give you the praise and expect signs, wonders, and miracles in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout amen? Take a seat, please. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Flo, okay. All right, I'm Flo. I used to give away money on that, but now when people say that, they have to give me money. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome to the conference. And as usual, this conference is something that God has ordained and he, his hand is on it. And you have a right to expect miracles uh, in your life, in Jesus' name. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to have, um, going through scriptures and the things that I do, uh, I'm going to have somebody, different people to come up and, uh, and read and, and do some things like that. Uh, because there is some, uh, I want to illustrate some things and so forth. So. Let's uh, first, uh, on this side, well, let's go, um, let's go, uh, uh, let's see, let's go, I'm going to be led by the Spirit here. <laughs> amen. Oh, uh, amen. Now, understand, whoever reads, um, you'll, get, you'll get $100. So, uh, let's go over here. Somebody over here to read, lift your hand if you want to read for me. Come on. Whoever it is, get up out of your chair. Come on up. Amen. And I'll put that money out there, boy. Let me tell you. No, no, you're too late, Doc. Uh, she's, coming. she's coming already. She's coming. Bless your heart. You, you can, you, you. I'll tell you what. I'll do you next, okay? All right. You got your Bible? You ran up here without your Bible, and I'm going to have you to read. How y'all doing tonight? Everybody doing good? Say, I'm blessed and highly favored in the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay, uh, let's open the Bibles to uh, Isaiah chapter 55. And let's go over to verse, um, verse 8. Verse 8. Okay. 55 and verse 8. Oh, you have to get the mic. Okay, all right. Okay. Uh, let her hold it. Okay. Let, let, let her hold it. She can hold it. She can hold it. I think she'll be all right. If she gets uh, carried away, I'll snatch her. Okay. Uh, but you can let her hold it. Okay. okay. Isaiah um, 58, the King James Version says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. Well, keep going, keep going all, all the way to verse For 11. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return it not there, but water the earth, and make it, it bring forth and bud, that it might give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Hallelujah. So shall my word. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It should not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it should prosper in the thing with two I send it. Now he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my, your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts and your thoughts. As the rain cometh down from heaven, and, and the snow from heaven, and water to the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Is that what you said? That's what the word said. That's what the word said. That's what the word said. <laughs> so, yes. I like that. Yes, that's too much. I might double you up. Amen. 
I like that. I like that. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why I read this, because I want you to know she didn't say that. That's your word. The word says that. So basically it's saying that God's saying my thoughts are not your thoughts, not meaning that um, you cannot have his thoughts, but understanding where they are now, they're in a, a state or condition that they're not thinking like God. So God wants you to think like him. All right. Let's go to another verse. Let's find over in um, Isaiah chapter eight and verse 18. Yeah, I can. Okay. Isaiah chapter eight and verse 18. And I think they might have it on a board here that you could read it off the board if you want to. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Amen. 818. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Isaiah 8. Oh, 8. Okay, that's all right. 818. He gets a little, little fidgety when she gets up here in front of everybody, but we, we're going to fix that. Amen. Okay. okay, here we go. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and for no. one. Okay, keep going, keep going. Are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Now, read that. Again, for them, please. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. Can you read it one more time, please? Okay. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Mount Zion. So we are made for miracles. We are made for signs and wonders. This is why you've been put here. This is why you've been born again and put in this earth and and put in the ministry of Jesus Christ. You've been made for signs and wonders. One more place, please. And let's go to um, Ephesians chapter five and verse one. Ephesians chapter five and verse one. Now keep all this in mind. We're going to talk about this because as uh, Pastor Jerry has already said, there's, there are going to be some miracles coming out of this, this meeting this, this year. Okay. All right. Isaiah, uh, pardon me. uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse one. Yes. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children continue. Keep going. And walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. All right. Now, what I want you to do is they're going to put the, the, uh, 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 the Amplified Translation on the board. And I want you to read that Ephesians 5 verse 1 and read it out of the Amplified Translation, either one, AMPC or AMP. And just read it out of there and let's just see what that says about us in terms of imitating God. Watch this. Okay. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him. Whoa. Do what? Copy him. Copy him. Mm Mm-hmm. And follow his example. And follow his example. As well behave, beloved children, imitate their father. All right. So God is saying there through the apostle Paul that we are to imitate God. We are to imitate God. Let's see, I think this is a hundred. See if this is a hundred. Is it, is it, okay. Is it good? See, it's good. Okay, all right, thank you very much. You decided to give our hand clap, praise God. All right. All right, now what am I saying with this? Um, Jesus, was what I call, or who I call the sample son. Because he actually um, said in John chapter 14, verse 10, he says, it's not him, but it's a father in him. He's doing the work. What kind of work? Works of God. Works of God. As a matter of fact, Um, 
Jesus did so many miracles, it says over in John chapter 21, he did so many miracles that if he had all the books in the earth, they couldn't contain the miracles that he did. He was a miracle worker. And then he says in John chapter 14, verse 12, so verily, verily, I say to you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he or she do more also and what? Greater works than these shall he do because I'm going to the Father. And I believe that what's been missing in the church has been miracles. Now, a miracle has some interesting power to it. Because here's Peter fishing, caught nothing. He was a fisherman by trade. And I have a feeling that Peter wasn't, his name was on the roll in the synagogue, but he very seldom showed up there. I just have that feeling because of his mouth. And here comes Jesus preaching, asked Peter to use his boat, got in the boat, sat down, began to teach. And then he finished teaching. He said, this is Luke chapter five, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. Draught is a great increase. So here's Peter. And Peter said, wait a minute, I've toiled all night. Now this toiling is what happened with the fall. Toiling didn't start until the sin of Adam and Eve and the toiling started. Toiling with everything. Toiling, trying to get enough money to get the kids in school. So toiling for everything. It wasn't the way mankind was designed to live. Mankind was originally designed to live in the garden. In the garden, it's called Eden. It's place of voluptuous living. It's place of abundance. It, it's a place where there's peace, there's harmony, there's joy. Eden. Why? Because it was a type of heaven on earth. And, and here's Adam that was placed in it because he was built for it. He wasn't built to worry. He wasn't built to struggle. None of that. And Peter had struggled and struggled trying to get this business going and so forth. Now the lake looked like it dried up, period. So what happens? <clears throat> is Jesus comes along. And just a side note, whenever you're in trouble, Jesus comes to you. Amen. So he comes along. <clears throat> and the next thing he does, he asks Peter to use his boat. Now, that's called divine connection. Got it? This wasn't coincidental. This was something that's prearranged. And so, out of that, he preaches, teaches, and now Peter says, I've toiled all night, taken nothing, but nevertheless at thy word, I'll launch out. And he launched out and brought in so many fish till the net popped. And then he called for his partners and they filled up theirs. Stay with me. Now, what happened here? because a lot of stuff has been preached. <clears throat> but let me tell you what I think, because I asked for a download. The Lord, give me your mind on what just happened here. What just happened <clears throat> is Peter tapped into the kingdom economy, which is mostly invisible. And 
When he did, he tapped into that through a seed called his boat. And once that kingdom economy triggered, was triggered, here comes the fish. Now, what I'm saying is I don't believe the fish came from the lake. I think they had fished and dried that, that, that lake up pretty good. These fish came from another dimension. All right. Now, wait a minute there, pastor. Well, let's take some examples. Let's go back in second Kings chapter four. And here's a woman. She comes to the prophet. She said, my husband did fear the Lord. Now, the creditor is about to take out two children, my two children. Now my husband's dead. Now, what are you going to do about it? And the prophet began to speak. The apostle and prophet are the custodians for the, the revelation, glory to God, the insight, the mysteries of the kingdom of God for their generation. That was heavy. And I'm going to say it again. The prophets and apostles, apostles and prophets are the custodian for the mysteries of the kingdom of God of heaven for their generation. So what happened? <clears throat> he went he said, this is what you do. Go out and borrow some vessels. Don't borrow a few because there are plenty in daddy's house. I love it. And so what? She went out, borrowed the vessels, came in. He said, shut the door with you and your kids and began to pour out. She only had a little oil. So some people say that's burial oil. That's what she was going to use you know, in her death. And it was expensive. Somebody said it's about a year's wages to get a little oil. So he's saying, okay, let's take your most expensive stuff and get those vessels, bring them in. Don't get, a, don't get just a few now because there's plenty in daddy's house. So she got them and she began to pour and they begin to fill up. Now, where did the oil come from? There is a kingdom economy. The oil didn't stop until there was no more vessels. So as long as you a pulling. See, tonight God can give you an answer about your debts, including mortgage, being paid off in the month of February. This February, not February 26th. If you'll pull. That's what the prophet's for. So what happens is she went back and asked the prophet, now what do I do? He said, now go sell, say go sell, go sell, go sell and, 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 and pay the debt for you and your kids and you and your kids live off the rest. In other words, I'm putting you in the oil business. <laughs> well, let's go back to Peter. Pulling all those fish? What did he do? He changed the economy of the coastline of that whole place. He called his partners. They filled up their boats. How much is there? There is 
an inexhaustible supply for you if you're in the kingdom. And what we've been trying to do is live off of this. Now, I understand that there's wealth here in this earth. The Bible says the earth is full of his riches. True enough, there's wealth here in this earth. And most of it is in the wrong hands. And God wants you and me to get it. As a matter of fact, that's part of our responsibility. This, this, this wealth of the wicked and transferring it is not an option. It's part of our stewardship responsibility. Are, are y'all with me here? All right, how about the woman? This is in First Kings 17. Here's a man of God. He was by, he had announced that no rain is going to take place until I say so. Well, who got after him? Jezebel. She's going to find him and kill him. She is not after the businessman. She's after the prophet. Because a prophet is a custodian of the mystery. And mysteries bring mastery. They'll have you master the whole earth. Now, listen, I'm not coming down, so you may as well come on up. I'm not coming down. We've been down long enough. So what happens now? Here comes a man of God. He's been fed by birds. Birds were feeding him. So God directs him because the, the creek and, and, and the river, whatever it was, it dried up. So he's listening for God. So when things dry up, start listening. And so he's listening for God and God said, now go to Zarephath. There's a widow woman down there. And, 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 and she's going to take care of you. Now, right there, he could have said, no, no. I've been to the widow woman's house before. They don't have even enough. They, they can't even feed them baby Hueys in their house. So what happened with this case? He said, okay. He goes. She's gathering sticks. He said, hey, excuse me. Could you fetch me a little water? Now, it's a drought on. Fetch me a little water. She goes to do that. He said, whoa, 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 hold on. Uh, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. She said, now, wait a minute. The water was, was cool. But now you're telling me to feed you and this is a limited supply? He said, fear not. Go and do as I have said and make me a cake first and bring it to me. And after that, make for you and your ch children, your son. And the Bible says, she went and did what he said. And they did eat. How long? The Bible says a year in one translation says till the rains came. So God can have a miracle last until the rain. See, people have this idea first that miracles are hocus pocus. Well, he proved that when he sent Moses down there to Egypt, said, hey, over this is Exodus chapter seven, verse nine. He said, now when Pharaoh asked you to do a miracle, see, he, he knew Pharaoh was going to demand something like that. So he got him ready for it. And he took that rod and threw it down, turned into a serpent. And then they took their rods. Why? Wow, they're doing magic, but you're doing miracles. And here's this lady. Every time she goes back to this barrel, there's more meal. Now she started with how much? Just, just enough for one meal. And then she and her son as she said, going to eat that and die. 
So I call that, I call that significant seed. And there's something in a significant seed. Lord, have mercy. Okay. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. So in this, here is, here are illustrations of a whole nother reality. That when Adam sinned, mankind got cut off. But now God is opening it up again. And he is saying, okay, get ready. Because you're going to meet the demand of the earth. And I'm going to have you walking like a walking supply house. Here's a revelation for you. Look at Matthew chapter 8, verse 24. And this is when the blind man was there. He asked Jesus to heal him. Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of town. When he led him out of town, he then put his hand on his eyes and so forth, or, or uh, spit on his hand, put it on his eyes. And he said, what do you see? He says, I see men as trees walking. Well, look what it says up here in Psalm chapter 92 and verse 12. It talks about we're going to be as a palm tree. And a palm tree is a tree that has more products coming from it than any, hardly any other tree. A palm tree. And you're going to be like that. Stay with me here. Come on, we're coming on up now. Now, I'm only saying all of this because this is why you were born. You were born, glory to God, in this hour to deliver something. And you, <laughs> am, am I getting through? Okay, all right. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> let me give you, let me, let me come down a little bit and give you a working example. So here's God. So during the pandemic, what happened is uh, we have a shopping mall. We have a couple of them, but one of them, there was a restaurant and it was uh, an oriental family, I think, that owned it and so forth. And so on. We had leased it out to them. But one day they called me and said, Pastor, nobody's there. But what do you mean? They're all gone. We can't find them. They said, matter of fact, there are a couple of cell phones left and everything. I mean, it's, it's like 2 Kings chapter 7 all over again. Here the lepers going towards the, the enemy's camp. And all of a sudden, the enemy heard noises and got out of there and left everything. I, he said, it's kind of like that. I said, wow. So we looked and no, they tried to find them, couldn't find them and so forth. And so the next thing that happened is we kind of took possession of it, or we did take possession after the court and so forth. And then uh, we built out a restaurant, yeah. nice. Harvest 365. Yeah. And we built this restaurant out. And then uh, God said, now, I want your employees to eat, but give them 10% off. 10% off, okay. So I gave them 10% off. To understand, I'm trying to make a profitable venture with this restaurant. This restaurant is not nonprofit. And so what happened? Gave him 10%. Watch this. Then after about a couple of months or so, he said, give him a total of 40% off. Now, I stopped smiling after he said that. Wait a minute, 40% off. Now notice what he's doing. He's having me to switch systems. See, if Satan can keep you on his system, then 
He can keep the church powerless. He can keep this, this work that he's doing going and, and the world going into further chaos. Because the only thing that can stop the devil is the church. So can we keep going? So then God spoke to me and said, now, he said, <coughs> excuse me. He said, give them 70, I think it was 70% off. And we got over 200 employees. Man. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out, wait a minute. See, see what he's trying to do is get me over into faith. He's trying to get me over into a place where I can tap into a kingdom economy. Because I'm still trying to live off of what I can earn, what I can beg for. And he said, no, you're not living off of that. So the next thing you know, he said, give it to them all free. I just got a report yesterday that most of them gained 10 pounds. I said, man, they've been eating everything I can put in there. Now, now wait a minute. I've never had a shortage. I've never run slack. I've always made it. Come on. Because all that was seed. He told me, he said, all right, we had some debt on the front part of that. Now I was letting it pay off itself, the retail, make the money and pay it off itself, but that was going slow. I said, Lord, what do I do about this? He said, pay it off. He said, pay it off. He said, yeah, why don't you pay a million dollars a week? Cause you got 7 million that you owe, Pay a million dollars a week. Now, if you ever take a miracle and put it in normal time, you won't get it. You're going to find the devil is going to delay you and so forth. Take it and put it in a place where it's impossible. I know you're quiet because you're, you're saying, is this man from here? No, I'm from there. I'm from heaven. And I came to give you the truth of how we can break this thing. The church supposed to be the richest entity on the earth in every city, the biggest landowners and everything. And when Joshua and Caleb said, let's go up at once and possess it, we're well able to overcome it. And the next thing you know, here come uh, some leaders saying we can't do it. And they did in chapter 14 of Numbers, they said, it finally said this, let's go back to Egypt. Let's elect another leader and go back to Egypt. The Bible says over in 14, chapter 14 of Numbers and verse 28, it says, God says, the very thing you said in your ears, I'm going to give it to you. And what they said is we're going to die in this wilderness. Did they die in the wilderness? Yeah, because there's consequences for not walking by faith. It's consequences for not going in. The, the Bible is about real estate. And, and you've got to go in and get, excuse me if I'm preaching hard. You've got to go in and get it. God's got it all ready for you. Already, you can take Miami, take it back, take the whole thing back. You're the most powerful institution in the world ever, according to Joel chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. He said, Even you'll fall on a sword and it won't hurt you. I'm telling you, this unbelief in churches has got to go. It has got to go. 
It should be that the man of God come up here after I finish and say, hey, we're going to take up an offering for this meeting. Should be one person over here. They said, what's your budget? Well, my budget is $3 million. Okay, I got 500000 Over here, what you got? I got 750000 Over here, what you got? It'll take about five seconds to get that budget met. Say amen to that. Amen. See, you're getting quiet because you think you got to earn it. This stuff has been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ and it's already yours. Amen. Now say amen to that. Woo. Are y'all with me? Am I, am, I, am I doing too much? Am I saying too much? This guy was in IBM with me. Can I keep talking? Yes. Ooh, well, I feel the Holy Ghost. Yes. See, you know what he's doing? He's cutting through. He's cutting through unbelief. He's cutting through because if you're going to have miracles, you're going to have to teach the kingdom. And what's missing is the miracles. See, we've been having personalities. We know people, hallelujah, he's coming tonight. Well, you know better off with him coming tonight as you were with I'm coming tonight. My point to you is, it's time to get out of this drought and get over into a drought. It's time to get out of this place where you're looking to man to try to save you. Jesus has already saved you and he's trying to now teach you how to live out of another kingdom. You got all this, all this, this racism and stuff like that. Let me tell you, the Bible says over in 2 Corinthians chapter, am I preaching too, too hard? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, any man, woman that is in Christ is a what? Is a what? New creature. All things are what? Passed away. Behold, all things are what? New. So right now I'm new. As a matter of fact, in Philippians and chapter three, verse 20 in the Amplified, it says, I have a new homeland. Yes. He said, my homeland is in heaven. Yes. So my citizenship, it says, is in heaven. Yes. And if my citizenship is in heaven, I understand you might be a citizen of Florida, but you're also first a citizen of heaven. Yes. That's the first, it, when, Lord have mercy. So what happens with that is, God, my, my homeland is going to take care of me. Yeah. And, and, and I'm a new race. Yeah. Somebody said, well, I, I don't think God likes uh, interracial marriages. You're right. But the interracial that he doesn't like is you marrying a sinner. Yeah. That's the interracial he don't like. Yeah. Moses had a woman who was black. She was a sister. And what he did is he, he, they started talking about him because he had married that black woman. God said, get up and get, come on out of here. She got leprous and everything. I'm telling you, the race that you are is a race of God. It's a kingly race. It's a race of the sons of God. It's a race of godly people that have come to Christ and got washed in the blood of Jesus. And what you got is begin. It, it has to start with your identity. You got to know who you are and there are consequences if we don't take the land. Well, there are consequences. This guy, like I said, I was at IBM. And so he's a friend of mine. He wasn't a close friend, but I knew him. He was a younger. I was in sales, marketing rep. And this is when I was, I mean, I, I learned how to tap into that kingdom. I had listened to Charles Cap. I must have had everything he had. And he'd talk about that kingdom and so forth and how that kingdom will provide for you, lead you to, bring to you everything you have need of, independent of what's going on around you. I happen to believe that. So I start hitting it. I mean, no sales are going. I'm making all this money. I'm driving a Corvette. I mean, going into a whole three bedroom condo downtown, you know, on the lakefront and so forth. I'm tall hog at the trough, boy. And so next thing you know, here's this guy. He said, because I heard they're going to fire him. Just through the grapevine. He's African-American. They didn't have but a few. And I said, okay. So I said, let me get together with this guy. And let me, uh, <laughs> let me, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of 
he, he's got to make a presentation to his manager tomorrow. So I'm going to help him tonight. Help him prepare something that, that they're going to say, okay, all right, we'll, we'll keep you, you, you know, or whatever. So I work with him that night. So he goes in there the next morning. He goes in there and has a big long meeting with him. And he came back out. I said, well, how do we do? He said, well, you know, I, I just started off telling him that, you know, Bill Winston told me y'all gonna fire me or something like that. And you know, just like a slave. And man, I said, don't this be all. He was gone in two days, fired. Because he was a salesman. A salesman must what? Sell. See, you represent a kingdom. The reason why Peter dropped everything is because he saw something. He saw a man with no struggle get enough fish to change the coastline of Capernaum in one hour. Say amen. amen. Y'all with me? No, 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 no. There are consequences to not taking the wealth. Read it in Numbers chapter 33. He said, now, if you don't take the wealth, what I was going to do to them, I'm going to do to you. <laughs> how, how about this man? Now, now, listen, if this message is too much for you, I'll stop right now. Okay. But I'm, I'm going to, listen, just stay here. Let me sew you up. See, because this is why we're here, the pandemic hit, and it's affecting the church just like it affects anybody else. That should not be, folks. Come on. So what happened? One man had five talents. He doubled his. One man had two talents. He doubled his. Another man had one talent. What did he do with it? He buried it. Then when the boss man came, what did he do? He dug it up and gave it to him. Did the man, the master, accept it? No, he didn't accept this man's work. He said, here's what the man said. I knew you were a hard man. I just knew that. He said, okay. So that's why I buried it. Here's what he told him. You're fired. That's capitalism. You're fired. That's very, very important that we see this, folks, because there's a lot of things happening, all kinds of things, borders open, all kinds of stuff happening that is not supposed to go down in the United States of America. Now you say, well, I don't know now, Reverend, are you getting political? No, I'm being Bible. Can I keep talking? Yes. <laughs> Y'all stay with me because I'm telling you, I'm going to take you somewhere, but first I got to, I got to, I got to knock down those sacred cows. See, if, if you, if you, if you, Glory to God. Let me show you. Can I keep going here? Yes. This is, listen, you are, you are a child of God. Say, I'm a child of God. <laughs> say, <laughs> say, I don't want to take you too far. Okay. All right. See, then, then we got to preach this, folk. You know, they told me, uh, uh, Reverend, um, they're not going to let a black man buy that ball. I said, well, 
Well, who are you talking to? <laughs> See, <laughs> you know and I know when you leave this earth, what's going to happen to your body? I, I don't, don't play like that with me. What's going to happen to your body when you leave this earth? What's going to happen to it? It's going to fall. If I leave it there, what's going to happen to it? It'll go back to the dust. Am I right about it? So I never, Lord have mercy. (laughs) I just, see, I I preach this. And when sometimes I I don't want to say too much because people get offended. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to knock down that, that, that door that's been keeping you from your money. That door that's been keeping you from your healing. All right, let's take another one. Let's take another one. <laughs> healing. Say healing. All right. Let's say a person is in the military and they get over there and one of those bombs go off and they have to amputate their limb. All right. Now the science that we have gives us a prosthetic limb that they can get. Do you agree? Do you agree? That's good. But that's still natural man's solution. Are you with me? All right. Give me another reader. No, your second reader. Come up here. Praise God. All right. Uh, didn't I have a second reader here? Didn't she come up? Where is she at? Is she, she's gone? Oh, she's over. There. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on here. Okay. Okay. That's you. Okay. Amen. All right. Now, uh, let's read. Let's read. Matthew's gospel, chapter 15, starting at verse 29. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen three times. Amen. Now, understand what I'm doing. I'm cutting away everything that is blocking your way to being rich. I'm cutting away. Uh, that didn't draw the, okay, where are you? All right. Okay, here. Let me uh, get it. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Okay. Okay. Jesus went on from there and passed along. Oh, I'm sorry to amplify it. Okay. All right. Good. And Jesus departed. All right. You reading from Matthew chapter 15, 15, verse 29. 29. Okay. All right. Okay. And Jesus departed from thence and came nigh unto the sea of Galilee and went upon and went up into the mountain and sat down there and a great multitude came unto him having with them those that were lame blind wait a minute wait a minute let's read that slowly those that were lame, lame keep going blind, blind keep going dumb, 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 dumb come on main Ma- oh, what main main Ma- what is what is main uh, without like cut off arms yeah. and body parts. Arm cut off, leg cut, cut off. off, amputees. Come on, are you following? Seven? Maybe maybe your kidneys not there or not function. I'm, I'm talking about maim now. I'm talking about this part may not exist. Am I right? Yes. Keep going. And many others and cast them down at Jesus' feet. They cast them down at Jesus' feet. Now what did Jesus do? And he healed them. And all. he what? He healed them. He healed them. Okay. In so much. In so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole. Wait, wait, wait. The what? The maimed. The maimed to to what? To be whole. He made whole. Wow. Now what we're saying is that Jesus, with a limb, put it back on. Is this the right crowd I'm talking to? Listen, you're going to wake up to miracles. 
Because the first thing we're going to give you is a miracle mindset. And I'm telling you, you're going to go home speaking the things, talking the things, so forth and so on, and you're going to see things obey you. Lord, have Amen. Mercy. Keep going. The lame to walk and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Look what happened. Jesus healed the maimed. And he said, what he can do, come on, you can do also. Say amen to that. Amen. Say, I am, made I am made for miracles. For miracles. Now, look at Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. I'm asking you, don't shut me down. Don't, don't do that because I'm the best thing you can happen to you right, right at this moment right here. See, because they told me you can't have that because you're black. See, now what happens with that is they're limited because they don't know the God that I know. Say amen to that. And because they don't know the God that I know, they're trying to put what they believe on me and I'm not receiving it. Say amen. amen. I'm not a victim. I'm victorious. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, you know, people don't like to hear this kind of talk because when you, when you believe like God believes, Lord have mercy, keep going, read that. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healed all that were oppressed by, of the devil, and God was with him. With who? Jesus. With Jesus. Now turn to one more. This is uh, uh, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. We're almost done. See, I'm trying to, I, I feel y'all, y'all kind of don't want me to say what I, I need to say. No, 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 no. Please. Please. I'm trying to give you the secret of how I paid seven million dollars a week. We're all here, sir. With the pay, paid it all and canceled that debt so fast it made the devil's head swim. <laughs> and you can believe for that kind of belief. I'm talking about you. I'm keep going. Okay. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Keep going. For the purpose, for this purpose, Was the Son of God made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. No. <laughs> Can you see it in the Amplified? Can you read that in the Amplified? Please stay with me because I got, I, I want you to welcome me back on tomorrow night when I come back. <laughs> see. You talk too much like this around black folks. I don't know about him. I don't know what, what side he on. <laughs> what, what, what that got to do with the Bible? <laughs> Fool? No, I, I mean that. I mean that. I, I mean no. <laughs> Foolish is one that won't take instructions. That, that, what's that got to do with the Bible? That, see, when I mention God is not against interracial marriage, right there somebody got mad. Now, you know why you got mad? Because of that tree in you. That tree is your belief system. And your belief system said, no, 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 I'm taking our men. What? Well, wait a minute. What's that got to do with who somebody feels that they should marry? Come, come on now. I should be at, he just said, don't marry a sinner. He said he wants you to marry some. Now, if you're already married to a person who is not saved, then you can pray for him to get saved. Why? Because God says he'll not only save you, but who would he save? He'll save your whole house so you can get your kids saved and all of that because you got born again. Right. Say amen to that. Amen. But we got to get past this racism because that's what the news media and all of them are using. They're playing this racial card and they're trying to get people upset and get them mean and so forth and so on and hating and you don't need to hate. When you know can't nobody hold your stuff back, you don't need to hate them at all. 
when you, come on, when you know nobody can stop you from doing what you need to do and going where you're going to go, but God himself. And God said, if he be for you, there ain't nobody that can stand against you. That devil knew he couldn't stop Job, but he tried to infect Job's thinking and made his mouth say the wrong thing. And the next thing you know, Job lost everything he had. It wasn't God taking it from him. It was the devil using Job to hang himself. And I'm telling you, he's not going to use you because I'm going to tell you right now, the devil can't even kill you without your permission. I'm going to say it one more time. He can't even kill you without your permission. This guy was in, in the hospital and he came out after 30 days with, with uh, this virus, whatever it is. And he, he was in there and he said, he got out. He said, Lord, thank you. He's hearing my teeth. Thank you for saving my life. He said, I didn't save your life. He said, well, you could have fooled me. I, you know, I, th I thought you saved me. He said, no, your faith saved your life. Say amen to that. Amen. See, we got to get to say, are you following what I'm saying? That's strong stuff. That enemy will try to talk you into taking your life. He'll try to talk somebody in, but he's not going to talk you into it. He's not going to talk your children into it. He's not going to talk your family into it. Come on now. He's not going to talk you out of your inheritance because you've got inheritance that Jesus already died to provide and God wants you to access it. And that's what I'm here. All right. Read that in the Amplified. It says, the one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offering him by acts of disobedience, indifferences or rebellion is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him, not God. For the devil has sinned and violated God's law from the beginning. The son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. No. Read, is that the Amplified? Yes. Is that the AMPC? No, AMPC. Read the AMPC for me. Just, just listen to this. Because I want to make a point out of here. I'm almost done. Listen to this. I don't think I have AMPC. Mm, you have AMPC? I don't think you don't have? have? It's on the board. Read it from there. You get says, credit. But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil, takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. The, the reason the son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo. Wait a minute. What? Was to undo. 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 What else? Destroy. Destroy. Come on. What else? Loosen. What? And dissolve. Undo. And what? Dissolve. dissolve. The works of the devil. The works Notice of the devil. what he's doing. He's going to undo. See, understand that if I get injured, I, I, something happens and a person loses a limb, they can get a prosthetic limb. But there's still evidence of the fact that something has happened to their life. Are you with me here? Jesus came to take away evidence. He came to take away any, any, any glory to God, any evidence that Satan or curse has ever been in your life. Take it all away. Take it all away. He'll give you a new leg. He'll give you a new arm. He'll give you a new kidney. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you a new. One more scripture, please. Let's go. You're not getting tired, are you? Okay, let's go to Ephesians and chapter um, 3 and verse 8, please. Amplify. Well, no. Yeah, you can go amplify. Yeah, amen. I might give you two. All right, that's okay. All right. Okay. You to okay? me, yes. All right, let's go. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, God's people, his grace, which is undeserved, was graciously given to proclaim to the Gentiles the good news of the incom incomprehensible riches of Christ. Wait a minute, you, you ran across that too fast. The what kind of riches? What the kind? incomprehensible <laughs> riches of Christ. How many? Incomprehensible Do you have a New Living Christ. Translation there? Yes. I'm just saying, the, the Lord have mercy. The supply house that you're going to be drawing from is inexhaustible. The supply, oh Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. You see, when you can see, do you have it? Yes. Let's mm -hmm. go. 
Though I, though I am least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave unto me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available. The to, what? Endless treasures available. Uh, what? Uh, endless treasures available. The endless treasures are available. Yeah. Now, how can I get into that warehouse that's got endless treasures available? Are you with me here? And this is what Jesus fed the multitude with. He fed the multitudes out of the storehouse. The storehouse is invisible, but the storehouse has got so much that the earth can't hold it. And what you're to do here is you're to be a walking supply house. You're supposed to come and whatever they need over here, you pull it out of the storehouse and witness to them and they're going to follow you. Whatever they need over here, you're going to pull it out of the storehouse and they're going to follow you. If they need healing, if they need something, deliverance from drugs or whatever have you, you can get a miracle and get it right now. Oh, praise God in heaven. Holy. Holy Spirit, help me with this crowd. One more place and I'm done. Go to 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5. Don't be thinking about the ball game. Think about what I'm telling you right now. This is a good night to serve Jesus. This, it's, there are songs in heaven that have never hit this earth. I mean songs that David played that can deliver the souls in your life. It, it, it's songs, it's business ideas that have never been received. Why, wow, we're busy fighting over this little limited portion that's on the earth. Man, you got ideas that can make Microsoft look like child's play. Say amen to that. I'm talking about the church is about to come up with a wisdom that the devil did not even plan for them to have. Go ahead, one more place, please. New Living Translation. Uh, what did I say? Last is first. Thess the first Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-three. Okay? And, and no, go back to the King James, please. It's good enough for Paul. It's good enough for me. The King James. All right, yes. Kelly. Okay, watch this. Now wait a minute. How much is in the storehouse? Unlimited supply. You you can't count it. He said, gather vessels, but don't gather a few because there's plenty in daddy's house. And, and, and here, the prodigal son, he went to his father and said, watch this. I want mine now. See, the wait is over. Don't be waiting on your healing anymore. The wait is over. The man was around the pool 38 years. And here was, was, was uh, Jesus coming along and Jesus asked him this, would you like to be made whole? Watch this. Oh, when I'm coming, you know, somebody always jumping in front of me and you know, I didn't get my check today and uh, so forth and so on. Jesus said, rise, take up your bed and walk. After 38 years, here's your healing right now. I said, here's your healing right now. Now I'm going to make a statement. Are you ready? Yes. You're coming into a time now that the whole church is going to be healed. Yes. Everybody's yes. going to be healed. Later. Come on, coming out of Egypt, didn't everybody get healed? Come on now. Read that. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and, and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now notice what he's saying. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, spirit, soul, soul and, and body. body be what? Preserved. Blameless. See, I know you got saved, but you might've gotten saved and had smoked too many cigarettes and now got some problems and so forth. How about if God not just save you, but heal you as well? And come in. It, wouldn't that be wonderful? So I'm just saying, sometimes we're leaving things on the table. And I'm just saying, I'm here to have you to know what's yours and I'm gonna help you get it. I said, I'm gonna help you get it. Now, I was gonna give you this, but God told me don't do that. He said, give you two. 
He said, watch this. He said, you got some needs right now. And he said, give you two. I'm going to obey God. Praise God. God bless you. Give her a hand clap. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Did somebody over here have some needs too? No, you didn't. No, you don't. Okay. All right. Let's, let's do this. Let's close it out. Okay. So Jesus is on the mountainside and the disciples said, send him away now. Jesus said, they don't have to go away. They said, well, they need to go get something to eat. He said, you feed them. You feed them. Now they're up where there's nothing. One place says it's a desert place. You feed them. And what happened? They said, one of them said, there's a lad here in uh, John chapter six. He's only got two fish and five loaves. Jesus said, that's enough. Bring it to me. And when they brought it to Jesus, he took it in Mark 14, Matthew 14, he blessed it and began to distribute it. Where did the food come from. You got what I'm saying? This kingdom. And this kingdom has got to be taught. It's got to be taught because you're the citizens of a whole nother kingdom. And God has more than enough, not only for you, for anybody you want to bless. I mean, if we did this thing right, we could be, we could be winning souls by paying their rent. You know, showing the love of God and people coming to the kingdom of God. So let me end with this. The man, Lord have mercy, help me, Holy Ghost. You didn't choose him. He chose you and ordained you. I never knew that I could have all my employees eat for nothing. But that's because I was not thinking God's thoughts. God's got me here as Lord have mercy. He's got me here as a vessel for his love to the world. We're not only owners, but we're stewards. When that kingdom is working, somebody's getting healed now. My hand is heating up. When that kingdom is working, you can take cities. Because when the kingdom comes, everything changes. We had our prison ministry. They couldn't hardly get into the prison and so forth. I stood on those steps and I acted like God. We're turning jails into boarding schools. God spoke things into existence, but he believed what he said was going to come to pass. Am I right about it? Today, We've even had graduations in there. Some billionaire sent us so many clothes. We got, we got space. We couldn't even put the clothes. Watch this. Shirts for $250. White shirts. Suits, 
top brand suit. I didn't, we didn't call for this. It just came out of the soul house. Amen. All of that, we dressed the, they had gone through our courses on leadership, gone through a course on finance, gone through, I'm talking about in the school, in the, in the jail. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now it's time for us to have a graduation. So the people that were going to hire them came to the graduation and they sat over here and we dressed all the inmates up in suits because of what was decreed. Next thing you know, they once I got them graduated right there, they pulled them over and had them interviewed and hired them right on the spot. That blessing that is on your life is powerful enough to change any environment to the Garden of Eden. It is on your life right now. Say, I'm blessed. blessed. Highly favored. favored. And I'm going to, I want to finish up by telling you that I hope you got something out of this. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Say this with me. I am, I am. who the Bible says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God has already made a way for me to have. So from this night forward, I'm not going to just look at the natural. I'm going to let God give me his thoughts and I want to see his provision because once I see his provision, I'll never be anxious again. I'll never be fearful again. I'll never be in doubt again. I'll never be broke another day in my life. This day is the end of my lack in my life. In the name of Jesus, I will never be broke another day in my life. I'm not looking at me. I'm looking at my Savior. He has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness. So from now on, I'm downloading. I'm taking what is mine. New ideas, business ideas, good families. And I'm telling you right now, I'm going to just say this to you right now. If you're looking for a mate, I got good news for you. God told my wife, we were down in Tulsa. I was in seminary at ORU. He said, uh, as she was believing God for a job, I came in. I said, God told me to tell you, put down the exact job that you want on a card. She put it down. I want it in this. I want it in uh, 10 minutes from the house. I want this kind of computer job. I want so forth. Put it all down and I want a car with it. Put it all down. Begin to pray. We agreed. She began to confess the word of God and so forth. Put it all down. And then one day somebody came by the house. Hey, Bill, is your wife in? Yep. She's in the back. He said, uh, oh, by the way, uh, told, told, pardon me, told my wife, is Bill in? Yes. And she, he said to her, do you have your job yet? She said, yes, I do. I have it. Why? Because God calls things that what? Be not as though they were. And the next thing you know, I was coming home and she was making some soup. I said, praise God, I can smell it all the way outside. She said, that's not ours. I said, what do you mean it's not ours? She said, that's a neighbor. They're having a hard time, but it was really our seed. It was a seed that we had to sow to release this thing to make it come. Four days later, the man called. He wanted to interview interviewed her. She came back home. I said, how do we do? She said, let's get the card. She went down the card as all things that we had. Watch this. And then I said, praise God. How about the car? She said, they said, go pick up a new Buick. Now, if God can meet her need as far as that job is concerned, specifically, why can't you specifically order the man that you want? Oh boy, y'all ain't getting me. Or the lady that you, come on, that you want a wife, you want, don't say bring me anything because you might get anything. But say, I want somebody with some money. Come on, I'm, I'm being practical now. Come on, I want somebody. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Come on, folks. Don't leave it till tomorrow. Get yours today. He said, I want mine now. Listen, these things that God has for you, you don't need to write no post-dated check. What I'm saying to you is these things are yours right now. My name is Bill Winston, and I'll see you tomorrow night. Now, let's receive that. Get up and give God praise because we're breaking the spirit of lack. We're breaking the spirit of sickness or disease, breaking it off your life. Come on, let's give God praise right now. Father, we give you praise. Come on, we thank you. We give you praise right now. Amen. Come on, praise and worship group. Can you come up there with me, please? Come on, listen, listen, listen. Come on, give him praise because it's already done. Before this conference is over, whatever you've been dealing with, you will not be dealing with it anymore. This is a miracle conference. I decree it. This is a miracle conference and God's got a miracle with your name on it. I hate to leave this pulpit like this because I want to see some manifestation. Now, go, go home, go home and take your pocketbook and put it on the table and put it out there and speak to it. See, y'all got quiet on me. I'm going to say it again. Put your pocketbook on that, put that checkbook on there and call money into that bank account. Come on, get ready for foolish thoughts. Come on, Jesus spoke to a tree. Jesus spoke to a storm. Jesus spoke to a dead man. Come on, speak to that pocketbook. Speak to that wallet. Speak to that whatever it is. Speak to it. Speak to it right now. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to start speaking. I'm going to imitate my father. Tonight is the last night I'm going through what I'm going through. Tomorrow is going to be a brand new day. I'll never, 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 never be broke another day in my life. In fact, the month of February, every debt in my house shall be paid in full. Dematerialize, disappear in Jesus' name. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't care how it's going to happen. But I decree a thing and it shall be established. Now give God some praise after that. God, give me something that I like we can skip hey, around on here. You guys know I got a promise. Hallelujah. One, two, Glory three. I've got a promise. Everything's gonna be alright. Oh, 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 oh. told me everything's gonna be all right the holy ghost told me everything's gonna be all right the holy ghost told me everything's gonna be all right be all right be all right be all right i got a promise i got a promise everything's gonna be all right. Oh, 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 I got a promise. 
Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. What a wonderful word from Dr. Bill Winston. I'm going to come back tomorrow night and find out about that uh, million dollars a week deal. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all be seated for just a minute, please. Praise the Lord. You know, every, every preacher, uh, I guess in the world now, radio, television, or everywhere else, um, talks about our money being a seed. We, we hear that constantly in every service, everywhere we go. But to, to my knowledge, I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, it was back in 1969, I was 19 years old, and Oral Roberts wrote a book called The Miracle of Seed Faith. And I think that revolutionized the church because as far as I'm concerned and as far as I've been able to find out, he's the first one uh, besides Jesus to talk about our offering being a seed. And uh, I was raised in church. And I tell you, my mama told me, boy, you need to pay tithes. And so I did. And she said, you need to give offerings. And so I did. Pastor stood in the pulpit and said, you need to pay tithes. So I did. He said, you need to give offerings. So I did. And both of them told me, don't you dare expect anything back from God. So I didn't. Don't you dare put any pressure on God. My mama came to me one day and she, when I was a teenager. And she said, now, Terry, I know you're a tither. I know you're a giver. I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I just want to warn you, don't you dare. Don't you dare expect anything back. Oh, no, ma'am, I wouldn't do that. No, no, no. And, and I was in the military. I got drafted in the Army the same day I got married. And uh, in the military, I went from having my own business and making lots of money as a teenager to making $128 a month from the Army. And that just wasn't cutting it, man. It wasn't paying the bills. It wasn't doing the job. And uh, uh, my wife's grandmother gave me this book. And she said, Terry, Oral Roberts just sent me this book, and I think you'd like it. I said, gimme, gimme. And it was called The Miracle of Seed Faith. And I went back to the Army, and, and, and uh, that was a, I was on a three-day pass at home or something. And I went back out to the military base, and I ate that book. I mean, I devoured it. And the best way I could describe it was just it got born on the inside of me. And Oral made this statement. He said, no farmer plants for fun. Farmers plant for profit. Based on a law of God that's a law in the natural because it's a law of God that says when you sow, you're going to get back more than you put in. Amen. And it revolutionized my life. And I think it's revolutionized the church's life. And we've heard the word tonight. And Dr. Winston said, significant seed. Significant seed. Wow. What a powerful statement. You know, I've, I've, I've seen those offerings before, like he was talking about, where you stand up and say, hey, let's meet the budget. And somebody says, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. So let's get it tonight. Amen. My privilege is to uh, receive the offering during this whole conference. And so I'm believing, my faith is on, that we just get the budget met. And then after that, it's just extra. Amen. Let me have that notebook. I've got some stuff that I'm supposed to read. Uh, so I do need this. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, as we saw, you know, I was praying. About, I didn't know I was receiving the offerings at this meeting. I, I was just coming. And, uh, and, and so whenever I, this morning I got here and Pastor Jerry said, I want you to receive the offerings. I said, oh, that's good. I've already been praying about the offerings. I just didn't know I was going to receive it. But Renee and I have been in agreement and been praying about this budget of this conference for weeks and weeks now. And, uh, and, and I've been asking the Holy Spirit the last several weeks, the Holy Spirit, you take up the offerings. You receive the offering. You, you put your anointing on receiving the offering and meet that budget. And that's still what I'm believing for and still what I'm expecting. Amen. And so I'm, I'm excited about us giving a significant seed. I'm excited about our seed coming back to us. No farmer in his right mind ever woke up in the morning and said to his wife, Honey, I'm going to go out and reap the North 40 today. And she punches him in the ribs and says, Yeah, but you never sowed the North 40. You never planted the North 40 because we have, to re we have to sow in order to reap. We have to give in order to receive. And you know, isn't it neat that farmers understand that? Way back in the 70s, I went out to, to Kansas and began to preach to a bunch of farmers. And uh, they'd asked me to pray for their crops and pray for their animals and pray for this and pray for that and pray for something else. And I, and I told them one day, I said, you guys have the best job in the world. I said, uh, you, you don't have to take the scriptures out of context to bless you. I said, us city boys, we, we have to take the, the, the word out of context. And we have to put it on our vehicle and on our, and on our th this and this and this and this. I said, the Bible just tells you he'll bless your corn and bless your crops and bless your cattle and bless your, your you know. And uh, you guys don't even have to stretch. You just sit back and do the law of God and the word of God that you sow and it'll come back to you more 
than you put in. Amen. So let's give tonight and let's do this. Here's the instructions that I've been told, I've been instructed. It says if you are using an offering envelope, then please write WOHP or Word of His Power on the offering line. If you're giving online, those of you watching at home uh, or using your mobile device, then select the Word of His Power from the drop down menu. And then here are the four ways you can give. You can, you can give online at wordsoflife.com using PayPal or PushPay. You can give on your mobile phone by texting WOL or Words of Life Church, WOL Church, to 77977. Number three, you can give by credit card or debit card before the service or after the service by going out here to the guest services counter in the lobby. And number four, you can mail your check to P.O. Box 6307. 90 Miami, Florida 33163. If you're giving by check tonight, make your checks payable to Words of Life. Here's an important message it says, If you're giving by credit card or debit card on your envelope, please include your phone number, your three digit security code, and your expiration date. Well, I tell you what, you just can give all kinds of ways around here. I told you this morning the budget's $87,000. In fact, it's 87, 855.51. I don't know where that 51 cents got spent on, but anyway, that's the budget. And, uh, and I said to you, I was just praying about it after she uh, asked me this morning to receive the offering. And uh, everybody just say, say 22. 22. If we just do some math real quick, if, if $22, if we gave $22 a day, 22 times eight days, there's eight, serve, eight days of service, 22 times eight is 175. And if just 500 of us gave that, those online, those here in the house, the, all this week, uh, it'd be $87,855.51. Amen. Isn't that amazing that we can break that down and look at it to where we can see it and get a vision on the inside of us of getting it done. It's not impossible. It's not undoable. It is more than able because God is more than able. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that message he preached tonight. I'm excited about the things of God. When Renee and I saw a year ago, uh, we were right here in Miami when COVID started, uh, uh, just before words of his power, year before last. And uh, we said, we see the handwriting on the wall. We see where this thing's going. It's going to get tight financially in America. And so let's double up on our giving. So we doubled up on our tithing, doubled up on our giving, started looking for places to give. And I tell you what, we've had our best years ever since then and our best years ever personally in the ministry and in our in our orphan ministry given to orphans around the world uh just absolutely abundance 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 so praise the lord you ready to give all right the buckets are down here and uh you stand up with me and uh are you ready did i give everybody time to do what you need to do praise the lord all right, just come on down and give in the name of Jesus, and God bless you. See you. No service in the morning, but tomorrow night, Dr. Bill Winston will be ministering. I got a promise. Everything's going to be all right.